Welcome to SAT TV News. I'm Alicia George. Thanks for joining us. In our top stories, eight new members sworn in to serve on the Point Michelle Village Council. From the region, Queen's Council calls for review of Nevis withdrawal clause. And internationally, first Ebola case diagnosed in the U.S. In sports, the government has keen interest in sports, says PM Skerritt. Details of these and other stories will follow right after the break. Welcome back. Eight new members of the Point Michel Village Council were sworn into office Tuesday with a grand ceremony attended by President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Savre and his wife, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, members of Cabinet and other dignitaries. The inauguration, which fell during the independence season, was filled with vibrant cultural dances and songs. Even the Prime Minister joined in the fun. It is for me always a pleasure to be here in Point Michel. Very hospitable people, very committed and sincere people. And I want to first of all congratulate our councillors who have been sworn in today to serve this community at the local government level for the next three years. And to say to you that you have the absolute support of this government in furthering the development of Point Michel and the residents of Point Michel. The Prime Minister asked that the Village Council pay particular attention to its senior citizens and the well-being of the children of Point Michel. We need to ensure that every child in Point Michel of school age is at school. And whatever we, we have to do together to ensure that every child is at school, the government is prepared to work with you to ensure that every single child in this village who is of school age is attending school. Meanwhile, outgoing chairman Glenn Aitchen encouraged the residents of Point Michel to work with the council to develop the community. Being a councillor is not an easy task. A number of times, community persons think that being a councillor is an easy task. And it's happy to see a number of persons here from the community. I think that's a clear indication that I'm hoping then that um, that's a clear indication that people or persons are willing to work together with the council. Because the council alone cannot do it for Paul Michel. And too many times we believe that the, the council is the one to do it. Aitian said villagers need to do a bit more to help the community. The outgoing chairman also encouraged the new councillor to build on the successes of the past council in the last three years. Council members include Chairman Henry Williams, Deputy Chair Erica Lewis, Dennis Charles, Nissa Williams, Thomas Serra, Ray Charles, Charleston Charles Jr. and Kanita Frigis. The Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force, CDPF, is soliciting the assistance of the general public in its quest to solve the brutal homicide of Portsmouth resident Marilyn McLaurin's. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector Claude Wicks says the homicide which occurred on Tuesday evening is another unfortunate loss of life for Dominica. We, from the police perspective, we, we have already begun our investigations and uh, we, uh, given, given the situation, um, we, we hope everybody will come on board to work together with the police to ensuring that whoever is responsible for um, this homicide or the death of uh, um, um, this female uh, will be will be brought before um, the, the courts of law and the due process will be exercised in, in the circumstances. Inspector Wick said they are indeed concerned about this incident but said the police will conduct the investigation impartially and objectively to ensure the perpetrator is brought to justice. Meanwhile, Parliamentary Representative of the Portsmouth constituency, Honorable Ian Douglas, who is saddened by this homicide, says McLaurin's was close to him and many persons in Portsmouth, so her death is like losing a family member. Policemen were on the scene and the workers started and the investigation was taking place. And um, we as community and, and um, residents will do all we can for to us any information that may become available in the coming days. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a multifaceted approach, first of all, from law enforcement, but even as a community, we have to come together and if there is any possible information that um, could be available that could help in solving um, that crime and bringing the perpetrator to justice, then um, we will certainly uh, be helping in that respect. 
Honorable Douglas also advised Dominicans to ensure they share information with the police authorities that can help solve such crimes so the perpetrators can be brought to justice. It cannot just be the responsibility of the police. And, um, and we have to look out for each other even you know, before those incidents happen, you know, if there is any suspicious activity or um, suspicious occurrences, then the information must be shared. We have to more and more um, take the cliche of being our brother's keeper very seriously. Reports are that McLaurent was on her way home from a PTA meeting when she was allegedly attacked by a male individual. Her body was discovered in a small truck near her home in Judgetown, Portsmouth. An investigation into her death continues. United Workers' Party UWP candidate for the Rose of Valley constituency, Ronald Charles, is concerned that the parliamentary representative for the Rose of Valley constituency, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, has not given due attention to upgrading sports facilities in the Rose of Valley area. Charles made the statement at a UWP public block meeting on Bath Road on Tuesday night, where the party's members spoke of developmental proposals for sports in Roseau and wider Dominica. In the Roseau Valley, I see in the Cochrane area, not only that we have had bad representation, but we also have a representative, and I'm not even going to call his name, and we have a representative that failed to take care of a small playing field so that the footballers, the wonderful footballers of Cochrane and the, of the great skills that they have, can have a place to play their sports. And he has failed to represent them because presently, as we speak, they are struggling to have a few lights so that those who, came, who come from the hard work in the afternoon can have a chance to play sports. He added in the community of Loda, the same situation arises. Charles explained that for a number of years, a representative of the area, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, has been speaking about giving the Loda people a new basketball hard court and a resource center. However, that plan has failed. This year, we have the opening of the Trafalgar Basketball League. A year before that, he made mention of covering the basketball court. This year, he came, he came back. He said the same speech. We have plans to cover the basketball court. Papa Boje, what you were supposed to do is say last year you spoke of covering the basketball court and here are the plans and here is things in place and we are working to get it done. But don't give me another promise. And that is the problem we have. We have to understand that young people in this country deserve better. And we're not coming here to malpale and heat blows and mash up people's families. We're coming here to speak of a Dominica that is lack of representation. Yes. He said none of the government's ministers can dare say they have represented their constituency in a significant way, especially as it relates to sports. According to him, the ministers speak of fancy plans, however, they are unable to deliver as it relates to the implementations of these very same plans. Ladies and gentlemen, anytime you're not interested in something, you do not have the eager to achieve it, or you do not have the energy to achieve it. That's right. And the parliamentary representative for the Rose of Valley, I don't call him his name, he has failed us in every part of his report card, especially for sports. For sports, he got an F minus. And we have to understand that we must represent the young people of this country. We have to do what we have to do. And it's time to set aside all this manipulating. And it's time to realize that Dominican young people need a team led by Lennox Linton to take us to the next real level. Charles was one of several speakers who addressed the UWP block meeting in Bath Road on Tuesday night. Other speakers addressing the public meeting included UWP candidate for the Rosal Central constituency and former national athlete and national youth footballer Joseph Isaac and leader of the United Workers' Party Lennox Lington, among others. The United Workers' Party series of block meetings moves to Marigot on Wednesday night. 
When we return, PM Skerritt says Dominica is well on its way to achieving Millennium Goal. Thanks for staying tuned. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has said that Dominica is well on its way to achieving its goal of providing 100% access to portable water island-wide. The Prime Minister was at the time addressing the signing of the expansion of a water project in Point Michel. Where countries in the world are seeking to achieve 50%, Dominica is well on its way to achieving 100% access to portable water in this country. The Prime Minister said that on Thursday, the government will sign another contract to begin work on a water project in Savannah Scottshead, totaling over $500,000. On Tuesday, 66 contracts were also signed for residents of Point Michel under the National Employment Program, NEP, the Prime Minister said. 66 more people will be engaged from this constituency, adding to an already 24 who have been engaged already under the NEP, taking the total to some 90 people who, who are employed under the National Employment Program. General Manager of Domlek, Batilia McKenzie, says the company is fully behind government's idea of pursuing geothermal energy in an effort to achieve reduced cost of electricity. She said the company is making the necessary preparations to embrace geothermal energy. So currently we are um, in discussion with the French consortium you're aware of the French consortium that government um, gave to do the um, local um, plan for geothermal. So we are, because we have a geothermal project team already in place in Domlek, we, did, we didn't wait, we already put that in place, and we are currently in discussion with the French consortium. Mackenzie said the company embraces any idea which will result in their consumers benefiting from cheaper electricity costs. Mackenzie said geothermal energy is a good idea when one considers the volatility of the prices associated with fossil fuels. Meanwhile, the general manager said the process for their rate review exercise is ongoing with the Independent Regulatory Committee, IRC. Basically, we have already commenced the process and um, we have to file by May, the end of May, um, 2015. So the process is ongoing. Basically, there are a number of requirements that the IRC have provided to us that we have been by them, and we are at this time adhering to those. She noted the filing for the rate has to be submitted by May 30th, 2015, so they are currently submitting all the necessary documents needed to the IRC. Mackenzie noted it is uncertain at this point to determine whether or not there will be an increase or decrease in tariffs. However, Domlek has not had an increase in tariffs for several years. We are going to go through the process and whatever the calculations reveal, we will make our proposal to the IRC. The IRC will review and determine what is going to be done, whether tariffs are going to decrease or whether or, or it will remain the same. Dominic is currently Dominica's sole electricity provider. And in court news, October 16, 2014 is the new date set for hearing of an application filed by the Office of the Attorney General in the matter involving five police officers charged with murder and currently awaiting judicial review of their matter. The hearing, which was scheduled for September 30th, was adjourned by Justice Errol Thomas after hearing arguments from the Defense Council and the prosecution in the High Court Civil Section. The state was ordered to file a new application by today, October 1st. The defense has one week to respond to the new application. On August 6th, the body of Joshua Aitian was found lifeless in a cell at the Portsmouth Police Station. Four males and one female officer were charged with murder. The charge, however, has not been officially read to them. This has been the local segment of the news.